Welcome everybody to another session in our Women Lead online forums brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas, I'm your host today, and today we have a subject matter expert in the hot seat who is willing to say, yeah, go ahead, ask me anything, I'm game. And our session today lasts for somewhere between 30 minutes and an hour, and if you've joined with video, you'll be able to see our guests and our attendees alike. Questions and comments are always welcome. This is not intended to be a one-way uh, dialogue. And if you have something you'd like to contribute anonymously, though, just put it in the chat and I'd be happy to share it for you. Now, our topic today is practical tips for thriving amidst chaos, increase revenue and cut costs. And I'm so excited to introduce today's subject matter expert, Christine Cunliffe of Bobo Strategy. And let me tell you just a little bit about her. Christine has played an integral part in the Bobo Strategy's growth through the development and release of multiple products, services, and revenue streams that have expanded the company's footprint across an eclectic group of industries and customer bases. Starting with $15 almost 10 years ago, Christine and her business partner have grown their company into a multi-million dollar revenue generating business and they regularly work with others interested in creating the same sustainable growth. In addition to her role at Bobo Strategy, Christine has an interest in supporting fellow entrepreneurs, small businesses, and women in leadership. She was recognized as one of Advancing Women in Technology's 2017 Rising, Rising Women in Technology and also received the 2018 Game Changer Award from Connected Women of Influence. So without further ado, I'm going to hand this over to our resident Smarty Pants. Christine, take it away. Hi, everyone. Well, thank you for joining. And first off, congratulations for spending some of your time to think about something that is tough to think about right now. Um, so a little bit about myself. We started our business with $15 of revenue. And one of our values is we don't like debt. We don't want to take on debt if, you don't, if we don't need to. And amidst all this chaos, we're still here, healthy and kicking. And so I just wanted to start off by thanking you for um, having the time and the energy to think about this. So essentially what I want to share today is an alternative to how you can think about how you run your business and also your personal finances um, amidst a lot of uncertainty. And what caught my attention for wanting to do this was when this all started happening about a month ago, a lot of people, including business owners, were quick to look at, well, what is the government going to do? What, what um, options do I have with that? And I am going to go under if I don't take out this loan or the government doesn't step in. And I want to offer an alternative and empower people to have options for what else they can do besides um, what is being heavily um, put out there in terms of how people can get help. So with our experience, um, you know, we have had to adapt uh, just like I'm sure every other business out there has. And what has worked for us and what has kept us um, actually growing um, amongst this time is focusing on how to process information and using information in the right way to develop options. Because no matter what happens with this, the companies and the people that can gather the most options and execute on those options are going to be the ones who are going to be okay. I, you know, I really like that, Christine, when you, because I love the word options. I don't ever want to feel like I'm pushed into a corner. And, and I think that fear and anxiety makes us do that. And we start grabbing for, for a solution without really stopping to think about, is this the best solution for me? What if I just waited you know, just a little bit to see what would happen, you know, and, and you're right. I think there was so much 
focus on here's what we're going to do for you. Here's all these things that are coming down the pike. Not that that wasn't necessary and shouldn't have been done, but I think people started, even if they weren't panicked, they started panicking because of all of the, the media around that. Yep. And I will say I was one of them. When this all hit, um, I was, I'm, my partner and husband would say I was panicking as well. But as time has progressed and um, we got better at managing the information that was critical for us to make decisions on, um, we're, we're growing. So um, I'd like to talk a little bit about kind of the two parts of information um, and how with our business and what we've experienced and what we've seen um, provide some practical tips and alternative ways of looking at your business and your personal finance that you could take away from it. So um, I would say the first thing to focus on is how are you digesting information? So there is a lot of information out there, especially when if you think about what are we, 37 million small businesses in the United States um, are now moving towards being digital, um, there is a lot out there. And so some tips I would have on that are, uh, we focus directly on information that applied to us. And I'm not talking about what some other expert out there is saying or what the government is saying. I'm, when I say, directly applies to us, we are looking at what's in the bank account, what are our assets. In reality, what one of the things I, I really went in thinking was I have nothing. Um, we had to pause and think about, okay, where are our assets? It didn't matter if they were business or personal, okay? We got a car, we have a house. We have clothes, we have, um, you know, we have furniture, like literally inventorying, you know, we don't have, or we're not in a situation, we don't have anything. Um, second, we focus directly on facts that apply to us. Um, one of the people who I listen to a lot is Dave Ramsey, and he has this saying that facts are your friends amidst, um, at good times and during crisis. And so we were looking at facts based on, okay, does our business qualify as an essential business? If it doesn't, um, you know, how do we adjust to be considered an essential business? If we're not an essential business or this part of our business um, will not be considered essential, you know, what can we do to support those businesses? Um, and so like one of the things we were, I was looking at and watching um, with a lot of focus was what was coming out as, you know, what were the orders? When were we not allowed to leave our home? What justifies leaving the home? Those kinds of things. Cause those were facts that applied directly to how our everyday life and our business um, were going to be impacted. Um, another tip Focus on the information from people who have been worthy of your trust, even during the good times. Um, there is a lot of bad information out there. I'm sorry to say, but that is the truth. And it is each person's responsibility to digest that. And the way to do that and do it effectively is think of who has been or who had your trust, who still owes your trust. And so an example of that would be, um, I come from a family of first responders. Many of my family members are working in these emergency rooms. So understanding what really was happening there, I wasn't looking at the news. I was talking to my cousins and seeing, okay, what is it really like? Is this PPE problem really um, what's happening? Um, we've made masks. So that is a new line of uh, revenue for our business. So. Who was I talking to to figure out how to make these masks? It wasn't um, just some person on the street. I was talking to my mom and dad who are retired nurses um, with ICU experience and they knew about you know, what was gonna help, what wasn't. And we were adapting what we were making. Um, other things to look at, I think there's a great, another great ask me anything about cash flow projections. We're looking at those and we're looking at those at a more granular level. 
Um, and then also defining numbers. Numbers uh, are important to us and that's what we make our decisions on. So we're looking at what bills are coming in. What is, um, what's, you know, who owes us money? When are they gonna pay that? Um, we know our numbers well enough that we know if we do not hit X dollars, that's when we're gonna have to make some of these painful cuts. And if you look at what's out there, there's so much panic. If you were to ask people, okay, well, what's your number? What is your number where you know, the business gets shut down? What is your number when you have to take on another job? They can't tell you, but they're, they're ready to apply for a loan and do these things. And I think that is something we all need to pause and make sure we as individuals and small businesses understand. I think that is, that's excellent because along with the panic and the anxiety, and that comes a lot from the media and, and what you're hearing and what, um, not that what's being said in the media isn't true, but, um, but does it really affect me right now? You know, is it really affecting my current situation? And, and you're so right about knowing what is your number? At what point are we now starting to get serious? So that idea of, you know, the, the graphic I liked, you know, to use for you is this going up and this coming down, you know, where, where do those things begin to balance out? And, and how do you, how do you know when you're now hitting that point where that, that balance is going the wrong direction? Yep. Yep. And and for those businesses that have employees, I would say it's important to communicate what that number is. Mm -hmm. The more you can be transparent about it, people are gonna, the more, you know, people will adjust. And the, yeah. um, so it, that's why I find it so important. I know what my number is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. so what are some, oh. I think, um, I was going to say I was, I had to unmute myself. Yeah. I didn't realize I was muted. <laughs> um, one of the things that I, I think too, you know, you need to look like at least a month out. So I had a little bit of panic in the beginning because right before this all happened, I had bought, uh, you know, like an island, a kitchen island. Um, and I had taken my car in for some major servicing, new brakes and things like that, which was, you know, not a normal, neither of those were normal bills. Right. But of course I put it on my credit card and my credit card bill came in in March after all the, everything had hit. And I thought, oh my God, you know, and the, you know, the, the big credit card bill came due and I always pay them off. I don't like to pay any interest. So I paid that off. And then of course, property tax bills w was due. Uh, April 10th. So when I was trying to pay that bill, I was having to move money, you know, around and I thought, oh my God, you know what, what's going on here? Like all these unusual bills mm -hmm. had hit before. So I, I had to like calm myself down and go, okay, wait a minute. Now I'm not doing all these other things. Like I'm not spending money. So this month, you know, when my bills come in, it should balance out. You know, I'm not spending money on golf. I'm not spending money on, you know, bowling and going out and movies and all those things. So, okay, calm down. Everything's going to even out this month. And actually, you'll have some extra money from a personal perspective because you're not spending like you were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yep. It's, it's looking at what those facts are, what it really is, what the numbers are, and making the decisions on how to act based on that. So. Um, Christine, I know that um, a big part of your business is strategy and, and kind of stick into the plan sort of thing, but what would you recommend to a small business owner that maybe needs to shift a little bit, needs to add another revenue stream or something like that? What are, what are some ways that you're doing that in your business? I would say if I would say this is the time to try out um, different things as long as it fits within your finances, and we as a company have done that. So like before this um, presentation, I actually took five minutes to write down where are Bobo Strategies revenue streams, and I counted ten. 
of those, and I'm not talking individual clients, I'm not talking individual people who have bought books, I am talking about specific lines of revenue. Mm -hmm. Of those I'm looking, I would say at least 20, uh, three or four of those are brand new within the last month. So I am an advocate for doing anything and everything to keep your business afloat and more importantly, your family taken care of. Um, I think what I am seeing out there based on um, hearing about what other businesses are going through and how they're thinking about pivot and um, adapting I think we need to think a little bit more outside of the box would be what I give, I would say for a small business. For example, yes, we do consulting, but I will tell you, I have applied for a job at Home Depot. Um, we deliver um, food on a DoorDash. That has been a substantial, um, surprisingly, source of revenue for us. And again, we're exper we're exp we're one of probably 100,000 small businesses in the United States out of 37 million that is experienced that more than 75% growth mm -hmm. this month. Mm -hmm. um, do not be afraid to take on jobs or offer services that are not in your normal day-to-day -day thing. Okay, like if you need to bag groceries to keep your business afloat for 30 days, do it. Um, and there's, there's learning opportunities within that. There are things that I've seen from, from delivering um, takeout that I could use in consulting um, or even in my own business. At this, the goal here is if you are a small business that has been significantly impacted to the point you are looking for a loan, you need to be looking at anything and everything you can do to bring in cash and bring it in fast. Hmm. So what, what are some of those things you've learned from, from doing food delivery? Um, people want it. <laughs> People want it. Um, the, the restaurants that are able to diversify what they offer are, are doing better. Um, so like there are restaurants that I've seen that have moved towards um, selling groceries. Okay. And I, um, other than, rather than just takeout or restaurants that are partnering with other, meeting other needs that, um, that others aren't their competitors aren't necessarily thinking of yeah. like i remember when this was all when um, things were slowly starting to be put on hold um seeing on some other forums that with business owners restaurant owners thinking okay oh my gosh um i am gonna i am i am gonna lose it because um i can't have people come to my restaurant what do i do and the ones that are still around were the ones that focused on delivery. Their employees, um, for instance, instead of going with like a DoorDash or something, are the ones doing the deliveries. The employees are taking on more responsibility by taking ownership of marketing their businesses. Um, they are the ones that are uh, like the, what is it, the meal prep, mm -hmm. pivoting from just making takeout food to uh, food that you can that is prepared that you can cook at home oh, yeah, groceries yeah. um i mean those those were ideas that the successful restaurants were implementing very early on because they were the one of the first to think about that mm -hmm. it's kind of like find a need and fill it right? yes mm -hmm. yes and that's, that's what like uh, i think a lot of the hairdressers are doing yeah, I have a friend that owns her own hair uh, salon and they're looking at and, and they didn't react quick enough. But like you're saying, Christine, you know, it, it's it's doing it as quickly as you can. Uh, but they're trying to like offer, you know, buy your coloring, buy your, you know, buy your product from them and that kind of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And even yep. some, I think, are doing like videos of, you know, how to kind of thing. Now that's a good idea because my, my hairdresser made a little care package for me with my color in it. 
and she put it in her mailbox and I drove over and I got it, you know, so we never saw each other. We never touched, but she made these detailed instructions in there. She even included the plastic or the, the gloves that I needed to wear and stuff, you know? So, I mean, I, I will love her forever and ever and ever, you know, but because she kept my, my gray from showing up. Now, if she could just <laughs> teach me how to cut my hair, that would, that would be awesome. <laughs> Yes, and it's, you got to teach your husband to do it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that would be funny. And I think that goes to like, so I, you know, I mentioned information and then having, a, being able to process and do good things with information will lead you to have more options. And I think that's an example of how to communicate information, okay? You're listening to what the needs are and what the gaps are that people are talking about. You're hearing the pain points from people um, that are close to you or you know whose knowledge you trust and you adapt to that. And I know that it's got, I would say it's gotten a little better in the last week or so, but when this all happened, um, a lot, you know, people are in panic and what they, I think there's this tendency to want to use information as a way to control. Um, and what I have found and that one takeaway that will be um, drilled into my head is that if those who listen to the needs, if you can listen more and talk less and do more, mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're going to differentiate yourself. And I'll tell you um, our example. I haven't I haven't made a consulting pitch in the last month. Mm -hmm. um, don't plan to. Um, we are just what we did was we checked in on our clients and people that um, we rely on for services, not in a pitchy way, but in a genuine way of how are things. And I think I may have even sent a text to a client saying how are things and just left it at that. Mm. And that is okay. <clears throat> um, and, and quite frankly, it will differentiate you in some instances. Yeah. And, and I would think that from, um, from a, a business perspective, if, if you can start putting a forward eye to things, you know, there's a, there's a consulting opportunity there or a coaching opportunity there to say, um, here's what you do. This whole idea of reducing costs is is never a bad idea and and not having business loans not that there's anything wrong with them if that's what you need to do to to keep your employees you know employed and all of that stuff but yeah. but i love the idea of a restaurant saying hey we could put this together as a meal prep and here you go because not everybody wants to just have food delivered to them they want to fix it themselves and the we're using you know christine we were talking about this before people started joining we're using instacart you know a lot for as everybody is you know for our grocery delivery and so forth and the people that are coming to my door are a wide range of people you know there's moms there's you know college age kids there's you know men that you know look like they're probably family breadwinners, you know, that kind of thing. And so it's, the world has changed and there is a need and, and, you know, nature abhors a vacuum. So something will rush in and fill that, you know, when there's a need being smart enough to see it ahead of time is what's, you know, is, is what's brilliant. If yeah. you can set aside that fear and anxiety and say, okay, well, what, what could I do? You know? Yep. And, and like these things that we're discussing here aren't, things you need a lot of money to do up front, mm -hmm. which is fantastic in this environment. And you don't, I mean, this is stuff that you can explain to your grandparent. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there is a lot of room for simplicity and doing little things a little at a time that, um, are going to be very impactful with however things turn out. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to invite um, you guys, Bobby and Lori, I mean, please join in, chime in on this conversation. If you have questions or comments or, or things that are kind of landing with you too, just uh, feel free to chime in with that. Will do. <laughs> <laughs> You know, back in um, 
2008, I was, I was running my own company. And, and at that time I was doing consulting and, and consulting around the area of um, employee engagement. And when, uh, when the economy tanked, you know, and people were losing their homes and, and all kinds of things were going on, I wasn't getting a whole lot of work, you know, where I always had a pretty hefty pipeline. I suddenly had nothing, you know, I had like one little job here and there. And um, people were not as concerned with employee retention, you know, um, when, when everybody was, was just struggling to survive and, and so forth. So I started looking for a job, you know, and I started looking for a job either in HR and project management, you know, in, in my, my background, which of course was difficult because um, nobody was hiring, you know, either at that time. But I had a number of people give me what I thought was really bad advice. You know, it, it would have been nice to have had a voice of reason like yours, Christine, where there were people saying, well, you, you know, you don't want to do that. You don't want to go get a job. I mean, you're a, you're an entrepreneur. You have a company, you know, what that that's ridiculous. You know, this is what you're supposed to be doing. And it's like, well, yeah, a company with no clients, a company with no work, a company with no business whatsoever. So, so, so what, you know, and I mean, the last thing I needed was loans at that time. So I started looking for, for a job and, and actually got a, a very lucrative contract with a, a big company in San Diego that ultimately um, turned into a job. You know, the contract was supposed to be a 90 day thing at the end of 90 days the writing was still on the wall that my business was not coming back anytime soon. And they offered me a full-time job and I was, it was not a very difficult pros and cons list. You know, it was like, yeah, I, and I, you know, you take the job, you do what you have to do to survive. And, um, there, there needs to be that, that voice of reason, you know, out there and that pause button, just push the pause button for a minute. Think about it. I think you're absolutely right. And that's kind of similar to um, when we made our move to California. Um, we started off with a client who is still a client here. And we it started off with a contract um, that my partner got um, that we didn't think was going to be that big, but it grew into something big. And they are a big reason why we took the move out here. Mm -hmm. um, so you never know when those opportunities are gonna come out. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's this saying, was it like, um, what is it? Success is dressed, uh, comes dressed in overalls and hard work. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, I believe that. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, from a leadership standpoint, you know, we talk about some of the great things about being an entrepreneur. You got, to, you know, you're your own boss. You wear what you want. You work what you, you know, um, where you want, do what you want. Um, you get but, to choose which 24 hours of the day you work. <laughs> yes. Uh, but the part oh, yeah. that I think <laughs> entrepreneurs, you know, forget is if you're going to get to do that, you need to be the first one in line went to take on the hard hits. Okay. So what, you know, like you should be the first one to take a cut in your salary before, um, you know, taking the hard hits if, if you're in that position. And I, I mean, this is going to, this is really going to bring out the best and the worst of people. Mm -hmm. um, and, but that is part of being a leader. It is, you are the first in line when the crap is right in front of you and you're the one that's got to navigate through it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, here. that leader, <laughs> be that example for people um, because we need that right now. <laughs> yeah. So Christine, what would you um, suggest that people begin to focus on when this is over? Because this too shall pass. And, you know, how we come out of it is going to depend on what we did while we were in it. But, but as when things start letting up and, and business starts flowing again, what are some of the things you would suggest people focus on first? You got to do it now. What you do now is going to determine um, what drives what you're going to be able to do 
-hmm. when I, I don't like saying the new normal when um when more opportunities are available to do as you need do what you need to do mm -hmm. um so again I, I would go back to manage the information make your decisions based on the the facts that you have that you trust mm -hmm. use that information to develop options the more options you have now the better off you're going to be um when things open up um, there are things that i am looking forward to we you know i've got we've got 10 different ways um, that we're still bringing in something. Mm -hmm. I've got at least two I'm looking at right now that um, we are looking forward to doing ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I, one of the things, you know, I was talking to my husband about this as we were picking up takeout and we were driving by all these closed businesses and we were actually asking this, like, you told people when, you know, why, why would you tell these people? And I, um, we both eventually agreed that what we would tell people is you need to figure out ways now to br keep bringing in cash. What if you're a spa, you should be out selling, you know, gift cards or offering your loyalist customers a significant discount to be one of the first to book appointments with you. Mm -hmm. The more you can do upfront now to bring in cash, the more options you're going to have when things get closer to normal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's, that's true. I'm seeing a lot of like even golf courses and things like that, that are sending out, you know, like on a group on kind of thing where you buy it now, we'll honor it, you know, within the time frame as soon as things open up and, you know, and there are significant discounts and, and that's, you know, that's the smartest thing because that's what's going to draw people to go to different places because everybody's going to still be worried about their spending, mm -hmm. you know, for a while after this. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, I'm kind of surprised that more people aren't doing stuff like that. You know, more companies are not doing it. Um, when, when we get an order in, like I, I had ordered something from a company actually before the shutdown started, but I just happened to place the order. And then like within a week, you know, all hell broke loose. And so that order was stuck in the pipeline. And, and I, I could see that they had received the order, but it wasn't going to, nothing was going to happen. It wasn't going anywhere. But when it did finally come, it had all kinds of coupons in it, all kinds of offers in it, you know, for me to buy more from them. And I thought that that's really smart and contrast that to other things that we've gotten, you know, in um, orders that have been processed and stuff that didn't didn't have that and so I think you're right thinking ahead how can I how can I honor my most loyal customers how can I um, how can I start building up a pipeline for the future for when this when this is over and and maybe you know just accepting the fact that your business has changed now when we do hit whatever that new normal looks like is my business going to be relevant and if it's not what do I turn it into? You know, how do I, how do I change that? Yep. yep. And I just had something to say and I lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's okay. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. I just, well, it'll come to you. Yeah. That's right. Patty does that to me all the time. <laughs> you're, you're the dreamer up of big ideas. <laughs> but I, I think that, um, a friend of mine was making the masks, you know, she, um, something had gone out in her community um, and she started making the masks. And then she, it was like busy work for her. It was something she could do. She makes quilts. So she had tons and tons of fabric, you know, around. And, you know, she said, uh, we were all sharing stuff on a group text and she goes, I think this is a cottage industry. You know, this is just something that um, maybe there won't be as dire a need for it in the future, but what, what could you do? You know, that, that's kind of the American spirit. If you can't get it from this company, where else do you get it from? Or if, if this particular supplier can't keep up with the need, how, how do you rush in and fill that vacuum? Yes. And I will say, so I've made masks what, for the last two weeks and there is so much I have learned from that process that I am looking forward to trying out on other things um, when 
those opportunities become more available again. Mm -hmm. I have never, I, I literally felt like it was a crash course in understanding products, <laughs> understanding materials, being creative. Like I was telling um, wow. you know, some friends, like, I feel, I felt like Maria from The Sound of Music where I was ready to take some <laughs> curtains I was going to put up and sew them into masks because that demand was so big. Yeah. Um, there was, there was a ton of opportunities and there still are to mm -hmm. learn about, um, in this case, product, which, you know, we come more from a service background, but oh my goodness. <laughs> Yeah. What a learning experience. I wish it could be under better circumstances, but that will be one takeaway mm -hmm. I will definitely have. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about your, um, I think this is intriguing, that you're selling used books. So was that always something you did or um, it was a little piece of your, of your business and now it's become a bigger piece or, or what, how did that come about? Um, I think if I remember correctly, we started getting into that business a year after we started Bobo Strategy. So um, my partner and I both come from traditional management consulting backgrounds. And when we started that, the company, um, that was what we were doing for about a year. And then um, we had, and that was, so we did that with no money because, you know, we had a computer, we were working from home, et cetera. Um, we started, we went to, I think it was like a liquidation sale or something. And we bought 15 bucks of stuff and we were like, you know what, let's try to see what we can get for this. Mm -hmm. And it worked. And we just kept Grew, um, taking the profits, reinvesting in um, things we wanted to try. And that is, I mean, we've literally been doing that. It will be, um, I, I, like I said, our company's been around for 10 years, um, but nine of those years uh, we've been doing that. And it has grown into um, substantial income and we're, we're fortunate to be able to do that. And mm -hmm. um, with this, um, pandemic, uh, I would say a few months before that we were trying out different products and this has really given us an opportunity to, I mean, test it out even more and um, it's been beneficial to us, thankfully. Do you have an online store like through eBay or something like that? Yeah, we sell on multiple platforms. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and do you keep a a, a a warehouse of books somewhere or? Yeah, they're in our house. I, um, <laughs> oh, okay. I, we have a garage. <laughs> so we used to have a storage unit, or we and we still do. But um, part of, okay, so part of looking for the information that applied to us, you know, I, I mentioned we were watching um, almost religiously what, um, you know, when things were going to shut down, what, you know, what travel was allowed we caught on to that, you know, that stuff was going to happen. And so we were already moving stuff from our warehouses into our home. Mm -hmm. So that's how we are able to keep it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, our home yeah, is not sure. uh, anything pretty right now, but that's, yeah, that, that was something we were able to so add. you there. So <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So now I think you should add like used, uh, jigsaw puzzles or, or uh, yeah, jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> That's oh, like the big thing now. No kidding. <laughs> yes, I'm seeing that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Like I, I ordered a. I um, was telling someone. Oh, go ahead, Patty. No, go ahead, Lori. Oh, I was just telling someone that I was trying to explain. Um, I've always been into jigsaw puzzles, and my boyfriend bought me one that was. Uh, a Ravensburger. It's a pretty famous brand, mm -hmm. and it was all gray, just a solid color, no, no pattern to it at all, just gray. And I was, it was like every piece had a unique shape to it, so that's how you had to put it together was by the piece shape only. So anyway, I 
he gave it he gave it to me. I did it. I was determined to do it and I finished it and I will never do it again. <laughs> but I was telling I was I was telling someone about it and I went to their website just to show some just to send the link to somebody. And the website immediately said, due to unexpected volume, we are no longer accepting orders. Yeah. So it's wow. like, you know, the the odd types of industries that have like had this big upturn when this happened, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of funny. There you go, Christine. <laughs> Start finding those used puzzles. Oh, what, what I've got, you it's, you know? it's funny. I could probably donate a bunch to you. <laughs> We have we were talking about this yesterday, like, you know, what what would you what do what do we not have or what do we not have enough of that when this happened, you know, when things get back to normal, we would do differently or we would keep and um, you know, besides toilet paper, you know, it is um it is things, you know, like we have our list of things we are looking forward to um picking up mm -hmm. when this all happens. So Yeah. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. I we ordered um, models. I, my husband said he goes, I haven't put together a car model in years. So he ordered a car model. I ordered a, a very intricate little greenhouse, you know, that, you know, because I'm just like, it was so cute. And I thought, I can't wait to, to do that. And, and then I'm thinking, well, where am I going to put it when I finish? And I'll have to find a place for it, I guess. But, you know. <laughs> Or even when like the, they started um, regulating that you needed a mask. So I, I saw on Facebook, someone was like, do you know where I can get a sewing machine? And I was like, what in the, on Amazon, right? And, and I go on Amazon and I'm like, oh, the lowest one is like 600 bucks. I mean, yeah. who would have sewing machines? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Or, yeah. Or fabric. Yeah. Fabric has been a big one. And so you want to hear a, you know, a story about how we adapted. Um, I had acquired some, uh, what were they, like dish towels and t-shirts mm -hmm. um, that I was trying to sell on multiple platforms that weren't moving. Mm -hmm. Those made, those were turned into masks. Interesting. <laughs> so that's why I felt like um, the sound of music, like I'm about to take my curtains and... <laughs> So, well, there's there's a, a fresh fruit stand around the corner from us and um, we were on a bike ride the other day that's been one of the things we've done to keep our sanity and so we were on this bike ride and we rode past the fruit stand and they uh, I was surprised they were open to begin with but they had a plexiglass thing up and this is just a mom and pop small fruit stand thing but they put this plexiglass thing up and I got to thinking you know about all of the the people that sell things on the corners, they sell flowers or they sell this or they sell that. And it's probably not really a booming business right now, you know, because you don't want to have that physical contact with people. But what about a sidewalk stand selling masks, you know, as long as you have a, a plexiglass thing around you and they were in a bag, you know, a sealed bag or something. I don't know, you know, what people are looking for. And there actually was a story, I think it was in the LA Times two days ago about, um, it was someone, I think they were, they would sell on like um, food from a cart and mm -hmm. that that is what they are now doing for extra money. Mm -hmm. wow. So, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's tough, but there's, um, you know, if you're able to pause again, pause and look at what the facts are, there's a lot of ways that people can help and add value and, and, um, you know, bring in money to put, you know, food on the table. If mm -hmm. you pause and just look at, you know, how can you help or what are the, what are the gaps? What are people complaining about, yeah. um, right now? And also I think as a business owner, when you think about getting back to normal, how can you get as lean as possible so that, in the event of downturns, you know, we're always told to prepare for some sort of disaster. You know, you're supposed to have whatever three months of money in the bank. I don't know who in the world's got that, but you know, whatever all of those things are <laughs> now, now that we get back, how do you get lean? How do you, how do you start making an effort toward that? Yep. And you know, that's, that's definitely, um, I would say one of the things to think about, you know, where you mentioned, so what do you, you know, what do you do when things are open again? That 
do that now um, for, you know, for a number of reasons. Um, you know, if, if you know, like, I, you know, I was just thinking, um, so we have, we're two employees here, but if, if I was somewhere where I was responsible for the livelihood of 30 people, um, I would rather be honest and upfront about, look, you know, it's not going to work out and do it faster to give them a head start or a chance in figuring out what they need to do. Um, and that goes back to how we manage the communication, you know, communicate, be, be transparent, be honest, um, and focus on what, you know, what, what is it you need to, to get out there. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, I think that is helpful because we, in the midst of panic, are more likely to just say anything and everything just to be heard. Um, but let's focus that communication on what is value add, what helps people get what they need. And, and that in itself is going to be incredibly helpful. Yes. Excellent. I, I like what you've always well, said. Well, and like you team. said, don't, yeah. And I like what you said earlier. Don't be afraid to, to do the, the something outside of your norm and just to get some money coming in for this period of time. Yeah. yeah. That's a be great, great to rather that. than take out a loan or go into debt further, mm -hmm. that's a great suggestion, I think. And Live think by your about, values, right? Think about the story that, you know, like you would, I mean, you know, it's story, it's, I mean, just think about the story it would have, you know, you telling your kids or your grandkids, you know, like, oh, you know, we started this business and when the, the toilet paper shortage in 2020 happened, we were, you know, this is the stuff we did. And I would say, okay, um, one of the problems out there that we're hearing is um, it is hard to keep your kids occupied. If you're a working parent, it is hard to keep your kids occupied. Um, and, and still keep your business or work afloat. Treat this as a learning opportunity to teach your kids those values and morals of, you know, the value of a dollar, um, work not being a bad thing to do. Get them involved, get them to understand, you know, like this is what life is and what are, you know, you may be a kid, but you may have the, you know, you may have a, a great idea that us grownups are not thinking about. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the, values and the morals that we use to run um, Bobo strategy were things we learned from our parents. Um, I would say, you know, like people tell me, well, you're calm and you've got, um, you know, you seem to have a handle on things. Why is that? Well, I'm the daughter of two retired RNs. Growing up in um, Seattle, we were taught that if like a natural disaster came up, mom and dad may be at the hospital and you have to fend for yourself. So you need to understand how things are and you need to be prepared. Yeah. I, I guarantee you there are families like that out there. But yeah. those things, learning them now, um, it's a learning opportunity um, that yeah. I think is worth exploring. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Put on a child's yeah, hat, right. child creativity, childlike thinking. Um, stick to your values. You know, I, I love the way you always say that, Christine. So. Well, this has been, I think, really fun and, and also really uplifting. So um, if anybody's got any last comments, last questions for Christine, Christine, any last words of wisdom that you have for us? Just two things to take out of this information and options give you more chance of sustainability awesome awesome great all right well that is our ask me anything for today i hope that everybody's gotten a couple of ideas i've gotten some ideas um i i think instead of looking at what we don't have and what we're missing out on how about what we do have and what we could do with with what we have so i want to thank you again christine for taking this time out of your, your busy day, your busy creative idea brewing day <laughs> and sharing with us, you know, how we can continue to be great business people, um, great women of, of business out in our communities and be of service to others. So 
Um, again, I want to thank all of you for joining us and stay tuned. Watch the Facebook page, watch LinkedIn for when these are coming back up again. And I look forward to being with all of you again very, very soon. Take care. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Thanks. Thank Bye. you guys so much.